This week on Sailor, we're talking about this. This is the Timo 450 electric outboard motor. Now, quite possibly the most wacky motor on the market, which is why Timo got into our top 10 innovative companies for 2023. Now, it's five kilos, 450 watts. Let's see how it actually works. <laughs> All right, so we can see straight away that this is quite easy to just get away with. I mean, one of the main advantages straight up is that this is only 20 centimeters draft required to get this thing to go anywhere. So really good for leaving in shallow places and the likes. Now, once you get out and away from them shallow areas, it's just a simple roll lock. This is the Timo adapter for, I think, pretty much most dinghies and the likes. They have another one which you can screw onto things. We've actually got that on the guardrails on the boat at the moment. That's obviously, I think, a good way of stowing it. So I'm just going to pop this on here before we end up floating under these rocks over here. I find the easiest way is just to drop it down, pop it on, and then you've got the usual, or you've got to pop it on the right way though. Which is that way. Spin around. Straightforward roll lock. Nice and simple. And the handle's sort of ambidextrous, you can use it with your thumb, you can undo this, flip around, use your finger, it's telescopic. Nice little red doodah on it to tell you when you've gone too far as well, so it's a super easy thing to figure out. You just go, pull the trigger, and we're away. Kind of just works itself, it's pretty simple. The advantage of there you go, look, straight over the rocks. <laughs> There's that 20 centimeters of draft working a treat look. Yeah, it's pretty handy though, isn't it? So you can adjust this to go like down a bit, like that, and there's like less leverage. Then it becomes a little tougher to steer, but like it's really easy to be fair. The only thing I've found is when it's a bit swelly, like today is a really calm day, but it is still quite swelly. You, you kind of get this obscure farting noise from it, which maybe you can forgive and maybe you can't i don't know but if you do make it a bit shorter in the handle the prop goes deeper in the water and you get around the problem but it is to the detriment of a little tougher steering one thing's for sure it's super maneuverable but it does take a bit of time to get used to right because it's shallow i gotta move this up a bit i like it about here on this boat i find it quite easy We've had this thing on the water for, I think, six weeks now. And all in all, it's a pretty cool piece of kit. Now, I know what your question is. Like, the question has to be 450 watts, 200 kilogram force, I think it produces a thrust. How fast is it? Well, I thought we should do a drag race right now. Get Jenny involved with that, hey? Right, let's have a drag race. Get that done. Okay, we're off. Chris called this a drag race, but it's more of a quarter mile race. But it's not a quarter of a mile because it'll probably take about three days. We're cooking full power. We're off. It's also a test of driving in a straight line, which I think's going pretty well. Okay, this is full beans. <laughs> Okay, so it's not glassy smooth out here, but it's not too choppy. So we are... <laughs> we're dancing between about 1.8 and 2.5. I'd say an average of 2.5 if I can... I reckon on a smooth day, we would definitely get up to 3. Which is pretty cool, there's two of us in, in the dinghy. Okay. Ready for a 360 spin? <laughs> yeah! <gasps> That's pretty good! Oh my god, I'm gonna get dizzy pretty quick! 
Okay, so she is definitely not a speed demon, but the question is, what is she actually for and what do we actually think about it? So, I mean, what we've got to consider is the design specs for this. This is not even intended to push the boat that we're pushing here. It's intended for 2.5 meter boats, which are quite lightweight. Now, we were testing on a 2.8 Avon with a solid floor. She's a heavy old lump. I think with all of our weight in it, camera gear and all that sort of stuff, she's probably close to 200 kilos and too long for the motor specifications. So yeah, I'd imagine in the right conditions with the right boat, she's a lot faster. Now, the other thing is we did check that just for the crack and we took it out in a Benetton first 24, checked out in this video up here. Surprisingly, it managed to push a full keel boat. I mean, it wasn't supposed to, we weren't supposed to. We've got to do these things sometimes. Only I'm moving on. Positives on this outboard are, it's just easy. You pick it up, you put it on, it's lightweight. You know, it's got to be the easiest outboard in the world to pick up and use, which says a lot, you know? Easy to cart around, you can take it to the shops easy with you. Lock it up with a pair of kinky old handcuffs as well, that's an interesting idea. It only weighs five kilos, you know what I mean? You just stick it on your bag, I mean, when we look at other comparative outboards, you know, like the two-stroke Hondas that don't have any impellers in them, they're air-cooled ones. Then you got the 3.3 Mariner, the old classic, let's say. Those sort of things, they're still weighing in it, like nearly 15 kilos, some are even up to 20. So there's a massive weight difference here. You know, you can stick this thing over your shoulder, with, especially with a floaty on it. Like that, you can just pop a ticket anywhere. So the floaty, obviously, that's another thing. The thing floats when you put that on it, so if you're clumsy like me, you can drop it in, and it really does work, so that's pretty cool. What outboard floats, superb. Um, fully waterproof as well, of course. So super easy to store, telescopic, can go anywhere in the boat in some respects. You know, you can put it in your wet locker, you can put it in your chairs in your saloon, let's say. You can put your roll lock onto a piece of stainless steel. I think I find it really easy. You can just zip tie it to something if you want to do, ratchet straps, you know, Velcro straps, because it's so light, pipe clips, the list goes on. So the basics of it are super versatile, in my opinion, you know, Charging options, really, really good. Charging options, 12 volt, 24 volt, 110, 240. Covers everything, solar charger as well, if you want to do that. So I think that's quite good. But one of the problems, what were they, what are the problems? That farting noise. I mean, that, that noise, whether you can forgive it or not, you know, the reason for it is, is the, the angle that the props in the water is not necessarily, let's say, um, optimal but that's because it's so easy to cart around and use. But, you know, the downside of it has to be power. But then it's not really designed for power. You know, it's designed to take someone with ease. I would imagine that its main optimal use is, let's say, a secondary motor. Like if you've got two or three miles to blast along in the um, Caribbean or somewhere like that to the nearest town to go shopping, it's just not the motor for you. You know, the autonomy is only one hour at full belt. We did an autonomy test. It actually took longer than what Timo specified to run itself dry, so that's good. There's a little bit more in the bag. The only thing to say with that is the tally lights didn't make sense. So like four lights, I think there is. You'd expect that to reach 25% of power. It, it was basically nothing like that. It basically, the first one ran out in 10 minutes, then the next two or three all ran out, and the last one lasted for basically half an hour or something. It was quite bizarre. But I believe they've been working on that, on the Timo 1000, which is definitely worth a look at. That is, I think, the most innovative electric motor on the market at the moment. But I know last year they were innovating the LCD screen, so to give a percentage readout, so maybe that's what's going on there. So worth checking that out in the future, see what's going on. But all in all, I think for what it's intended for, it's a cracking piece of kit. It's only real downside, in my opinion, is, I mean, once you accept the fact it doesn't go fast, because it's not what it's for, its ideal usage is as a second motor, if you want to be able to get something on and off the boat easily, I think that's the way to go. And second to that, its only real downside is close quarters maneuvering. And you know, the thing isn't designed for close quarters maneuvering. It's designed to get off the boat and go to shore not mess around inside a harbour, which we did try. And although you can spin around on the spot easy, it, it tends to push an outboard sideways rather than around a corner in close quarters. But that's not what you do in it. That's not what you do with a tender. So personally, I think it's quite good. It's only other downside in my eyes is its price. You know, and it, it's coming in at, you know, nearly 1,600 
euros. That's a lot of money. I mean, you could buy the, you know, you could buy any of the, the four stroke two horsepower motors or something like that, which are its direct competitors for, you know, around 700 euros, let's say. So it's way cheaper, less than, they're less than half the price. And it's the price of lithium, isn't it? That's what it is. And the lightweight, and you don't have to carry fuel, and you don't have that to worry about. You don't have servicing costs. I mean, all you've got to do with this is run it through fresh water. It's all on the Timo website. Go and check that out. That will be in the link down below. It's super useful, guys. They've got their own YouTube talking about all of their motors and the like. So really, really thriving company right now. So if you're in the market for something which is lightweight and easy to take around and easy to use, and you don't mind spending a bit on it, I think it's a pretty good option. So that's our review on the Timo 450. I hope it makes some, uh, some use to you and you find something useful in that content, let's say. So moving on to the next few weeks, we've got a whole bunch of content coming out. We've got all sorts happening. We're in Greece, we're in Spain, we're at the boat shows, we may be and see you guys in Southampton, and then we're off to La Rochelle as well. So a lot coming up with Sail Hub over the next few months, a lot going on with reviews and some interviews from people from different parts of the industry as well. So stay tuned for those. Really would appreciate if you like our channel, click the old thummy button thing and subscribe. That would be really cool. Subscribe makes such a difference to us. It really does. Anyhow, we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.